morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Today is the second Sunday after Trinity. A few announcements before we begin today. First, uh, the July newsletter is uh, getting ready to be produced. Please try to get stuff in tomorrow into the office. That way we can get it all assembled and out before the weekend. Um, also, a week from tomorrow, we will be holding a blood drive here. Um, donations will be by appointment only. There's information in your bulletin, so please do uh, bear that in mind. And then also, do remember, uh, next month, July 11th, uh, that's a Saturday, we're going to be handling the distribution of uh, food baskets for the town. So we're collecting canned fruits and vegetables, so please bring some of those in. And speaking of food... We have received a part of a shipment of food that needs to be distributed, and it's been distributed as much as we can think of it, so now you all need to help take some. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask Frosty. I can't see where she's at at the moment. But, oh, that, you're in a dark spot. Uh, I, I can't see that far. Okay, but, uh, but, <laughs> But there's stuff back in the uh, the fridge in the kitchen and things like that, fruits, vegetables, and cheese type stuff, so please do take it. Otherwise, it gets left and I have to figure out how to cook it and my family will get sick of eating all of it. So, let's share, all right? Got it? Okay, Victor seems excited about it, but I'll get sick of it. So, um, with that being said, our order of service is Divine Service 71, as uh, printed up in our bulletin. We'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 802. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and 
and walked in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call learning servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord was my support. He, my he brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my God, my fortress, and my deliverer. For you save a humble people. Of the God that I This God, his way is perfect. The Lord is the Lord who is true. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. And sing to you in your name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace for the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Trinity, Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both in God, in, to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. He came and he preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reclined at table with him, that is Jesus, heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. When the first said to him, I've bought a field, and I must go out to see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. The servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. The master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 514. The bridegroom soon will call us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I've almost gotten to the point where I don't like preaching our gospel text. Mind you, I love the text. It's one I rather enjoy. I think it's profound. It's a parable Jesus tells about a feast while he's at a feast. It's wonderful and deep and profound, but too often it gets reduced to whining. Whining about how often people don't come to church. Complaining about how many people show up, or more to the point, don't show up. Let's nag people into being here, blah, 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 blah. And I mean, blowing off God's invitation is a theme. But no one in the text moves, or whines, or nags. There's no manipulation, no pleading, no cajoling. It just deals with reality, how things are. Consider, our, our gospel lesson begins with this. When one of those who reclined at table with him, that is Jesus, heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. So what's going on? Jesus is at a feast, at a swanky Sabbath meal thrown by some uppity Pharisees. But why is Jesus there? Not because they wanted him there. Not because they enjoyed Jesus' company, but because they had set a trap for him. This is the meal where there's the guy with dropsy. So are you going to heal on the Sabbath or not? This is the meal where Jesus warns about not sitting up front when invited to a feast, lest you lose your place. It's better to be invited higher. Everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Oh, and by the by, invite the poor and lame to your feast who can't pay you back. We'll get a service theme with that part of the day later on in the summer. But for now, can you picture it? There they are, folks setting a trap for Jesus. Jesus turning the tables. Jesus observing how they're all doing a bunch of social posturing and how stupid their posturing is. Rather, just have a feast and enjoy it. Invite people who will simply enjoy it. In silence. Everything goes over like a lead balloon. And in that silence, when Jesus has just lambasted everyone there, one fellow coughs and says, <clears throat> Well, yes, yes, I, I suppose it will be nice one day in the kingdom of God when we will be feasting there. Do you hear this for what it is? The pious blow off of Jesus. The fellow is there eating with Jesus, with the Messiah. He has God himself give him several sermons, and he has the hooks but to say, oh, one day it'll be nice to be with God. <laughs> At best, it's an awkward attempt to get the conversation up and going again by saying something that everyone should agree with. But it's probably really just brushing aside everything Jesus has said as a bunch of manby-pamby religious mumbo jumbo. So, Jesus will give another parable. A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. Oh yeah, you want to eat bread in the kingdom of God, do you? Well, I happen to know for a fact that just a few years ago, John the Baptist was here preaching, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. God wants you, really wants you at this feast. But what was your reaction? But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I go examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. All these excuses in the story, they are nice sounding excuses but they don't hold water imagine your kid is getting married and you're hosting a big dinner afterwards and you've invited your friends and they've got their spot at the table and they never show up they ghost you and you call and you ask where are you oh i, I bought a new field i, I bought a tractor i, I can't <laughs> come and jesus comes preaching teaching, 
and healing. The kingdom of God is in your midst. I'll even come eat with you. But these very Pharisees who are at this feast with Jesus make excuses, stupid excuses to ignore him, to put him to the test, to grouse and complain, to blow him off, to just poo-poo him. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out to the streets and lanes of the city and bring the poor and crippled and blind and lame. Did you catch it? There is not a drop of hand room, not an ounce of moping, not a single nag. The master doesn't say, oh, go ask him again. He doesn't say, pretty please, with a chair down top, come to my feast. He doesn't even try to nag them to come. None of those manipulative things that we tend to think of with this text, that we tend to want to do to manipulate people into coming to church, happen. Instead, I've got my meal. Go find people who would like a meal, who don't normally get to come to the meals that these blowhards like to throw and find more important. The image here isn't of a lovesick boy waiting by a phone just hoping the popular girl will give him a call. God's not sitting on a block of ice waiting on these Pharisees. No, the, the feast is for you. But if you don't want to come, You'd rather have an excuse instead of the feast well suit yourself. I'll get the poor. And then I'll get the ruffians, the scum, the villains. I'll bring them in. For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall taste my banquet. But if you don't want to come, you'll miss out. And in the end, I'm not even going to send Lazarus with a fingertip of water. Not a thing. So often we think like consumers, like shoppers. I have money to spend, and that means I'm important. It means the customer is always right, so you better bend over backwards, otherwise I'll spend my money at the competition. Get mad at Burkhock, and I'll go to Jeweler Crew. <laughs> McDonald's messes up your order, fine, I'll go to Wendy's. That's how we treat so many things, so many relationships in our life. Don't like something, find something better. I'll find a better job. I'll find better friends. I'll find a better spouse. I'll find a better church. Let's be honest, that's often how we can think of church. Like we're just one of oh so many religious restaurants hoping that customers come in, enjoy the meal, and hopefully leave big tips. You know, where are the offerings? Are. <laughs> come back again, we don't go to our competitors. Well, as Trinity is a, a con, uh, as, as a congregation is a business, we, we do have bills to pay. Thank you very much for paying the bills because I'm one of them. I appreciate it. And as a congregation, we, we do need to take our members and community to account. But that's how we as members of Trinity relate to each other and to our community. However, that is in no way, shape, or form how your relationship with God works or is supposed to work. Not one bit. You see, the danger is this. If you start treating God like you're a consumer, like a customer, you'll start to sit in judgment of God. That's what we do. We, we judge businesses and decide whether or not we want to shop there. They serve us. We decide what is a good deal and what isn't. We don't get to be the God, judge of God. That utterly flips things around. He's the judge. But if I think I'm in charge, if I think I'm the one who gets to determine what is good and what is evil, well, that's sin. That's the basis. That's the origin of all sin and unbelief. Ignoring what God says is good and instead wanting to sit and grouse about God. And that's what the Pharisees in this text were doing. They were grousing and nitpicking Jesus because he wasn't what they wanted their Messiah to be. So they miss it. They miss out on the real and true benefits of Jesus, the grace and mercy of God for them, because they think it's not worth it. And they miss out on the wonderful truth. That truth is this. God wants to save you. That's the whole point of the scriptures. The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit wants you to be saved. Even though Adam and Eve ruin all creation, 
We're here to wait God promises to save. Not because of anything we can give to him, but simply because God is a giver who wants to have a great feast for all eternity. And he wants you there. And he does everything required for this feast. It doesn't hinge on you whatsoever. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. All set up, all, all done by Christ Jesus. It is finished. But if you want to be a, a consumer, a customer who is always right, you'll miss it. The salvation is a free gift, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Super spiritual shoppers like the Pharisees love boasting in themselves and how good and how smart and how right they are, more than they love salvation. But when you see the truth, when you see that you are poor in the spirit, and that you've been crippled by sin, that you, you don't show the love that you ought and aren't the person you were created to be, when, when you realize how many blind spots you have and how lame your excuses are, then, then this feast of salvation is a treasure. When you've been driven to the highways and hedges and are tired and sore, then this feast is a sight to behold. And here it is. Today, this is the feast. And Christ Jesus calls you unto himself today. He has gathered you here as the baptized here at his house. To give you forgiveness in himself and to strengthen both your love to your neighbor and your faith in him. And this is what he does because he loves you and, and he really wants to bless you for eternity. Beware of the times when your sinful flesh rises up to rail against Jesus Christ and his feast of forgiveness, life, and salvation. That's where the daily contrition and repentance of, of your baptismal life come in. Because Satan will try to twist you away from here. No, you're baptized. You belong to Christ, and this is the feast, and Christ holds it for your good. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess now the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Amen. Pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by your grace, we who once were far off have been brought near to you by the blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Remove from us all pride and vanity, and give to us humble hearts that recognize that you have graciously made us members of your household without any merit or worthiness in us. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, continue to raise up faithful servants among us, that the invitation to your great banquet will be delivered in all places, and that your banquet hall will be filled with sinners redeemed by Christ the crucified. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful Father, look upon the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed with compassion, and tend to their needs. Remove from us any excess love of earthly treasures, that we would be moved to aid when able. Bless the charitable organizations and social agencies of our land, 
that relief would be found in them for those who need it, especially for those afflicted by this pandemic and the response unto it. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Father, bestow your blessing on the vocation of fatherhood, that fathers would love and provide for their children, and that children would respect and honor their fathers. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Compassionate Father, have mercy on all who are suffering and desire your aid at this present time, especially our brothers and sisters, Benny, Diane, Evelyn, Raven, Doris, Genevieve, Lois, June, Kara, Mike, Dorothy, Randy, Violetta, Maggie, John, Glenn, Jeff, Jamie, Eric, Grace, Bonnie, Darcy, Lisa, Donna, Jeannie, Jean, Marianne, Darlene, Pat, Tanya, Kevin, Verla, Audrey, Scott, Dorla, Kim, Donna, and Merlin. According to your gracious will, heal their infirmities and give them strength to bear their crosses in Christian patience. Also give continued wisdom to those who lead and to those who serve, especially those who work in hospitals and those who work in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Before we close, remember there is food to be shared in the back to take on home. We got part of a shipment in, so please do uh, swing by the kitchen in the back. Take what looks good and enjoy it. Have a blessed week. We will close with hymn number 818, In These Gladness.
Did the, didn't Elaine do a nice job? Good, good, good. Did the, did you plant this year? I did. Did you have to replant? I didn't. I waited. I, no, it's empty. We got more to later, so. Well, you got more time. It was in the, it was in the May for a planning. I didn't. Did you, did, was, what, was what happened last year one of the reasons why you waited? Or were you just, or were just normally wait that late anyway? No, last year it rained too much. I know, well, yeah, but it rained, like, it, it rained too much early, just like it did this year, didn't yeah. it? But it dried up. And, well, the cutoff date is June 6th. So what happens June 6th? Then, then, you know, then, then that prevent plant leaves the corn. Is that because it would be a time because it's the federal it's crop said so? Because the federal crop insurance is oh, fix that day. Oh, yeah. it's not nothing to do with the fact that it could be like beyond that date, you're going to definitely get frost. Or no, it's, it's, it's federal crop is oh. said that that's a magic day for corn and June 20th is soybeans. soybeans. Yeah. Excellent job, Elaine. Really, really yeah. nice. I have a really bad habit of walking out of here with my organ shoes on. <laughs> and if you know anything about organ oh shoes, I know. you're not, you see, you're supposed to be smooth mm -hmm. like that. And if you walk in, you know, once you walk in concrete or asphalt for a work while. Anymore. They're rough. <laughs> yeah. Where do you want this binder? Um, uh, you can just leave it in there. Okay. So what was the next song we got coming up? Uh, Perfect. 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 So just let me know when you want to do it. Okay. You probably know. I know. Oh yeah, no, because that one's slower and it's, there's a lot less to it. What do you so, mean? There's just, I mean, it, it's not quite as long as blessings, and there isn't quite as much. Take a patient. Vocal, well, and vocally, there's just not as much going on, which okay. is okay. So, um, yeah, no, I'm ready for that one whenever. Did what that song you sent me? The what's his name? Tor Torin. 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 Is that you, you just sent me that because you just like it, or 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 you think that, or or that, that you might want it, you could actually sing it. Because I mean, it's a guy's song. I mean, it would be gorgeous if somebody sang it, but it, yeah, I, it's, just, it's just one of you. my favorites. I don't think that would work for your range, would it? It depends on what key it's in. Um, but I just sense it because the piano part and everything always—it's just oh, always yeah. really pretty. It's one of my favorites. I always have that on in my car. So, I bet we were talking last week about um, really pretty piano accompaniments yeah, with songs, and so I meant to send it to you Sunday, and I forgot, and so I, um, and so I sent it to you last night, because I remembered, because I was, yeah, but I love that song. And he has like a poppier version of it, but that's my favorite, is the one with just the piano. Yeah, it's really great. But he has a lot of good music. One of his songs, he had an actual music video on it. Yeah. And it, they, Thank you. And they, he, they, it's like set in a, like a bar with open mic. Oh, mic. really? Yeah. And he gets up there. It's kind of a weird. I don't know who. Is it, they said, look like, Koran or the, no, it's a lady who just pronounces his name. Yeah. You know. So, no, it's, you know, whatever. It's kind of weird. I don't know, but I don't think they put a lot of thought into the. Well, it might have honestly been almost kind of a thing of, you know. I think it's well found. Oh, I, don't, I think so. I don't know that I know that one. Anyway, um, yeah, if you if you YouTube it, he comes over a music video and he's like, okay, it's like, <laughs> it's like. He's really awesome though. He writes amazing music. I'm yeah. really glad that he's kind of like out and about now. Yeah. He's, he's just got a really nice voice. He's got yes. that voice that it's just like. I could listen to this all day, and I don't want yeah. to sing this voice. People, guys, they can go straight to their head voice and mm -hmm. back and like that so smoothly. I'm like so jealous yeah. because you know it's like it's so, that's so hard. Yeah. And, but for some people, it's not. This is natural right. for them. It's not. It's not easy for me. I've got those breaks in my voice. Yeah, that it exactly. Tends to hit. Exactly. I'm the same way. Yeah. I have trouble. That's my. That's my. I, I feel the most vulnerable when I'm. Doing that in the fourth because I, you know, it's it's because you know, it, it sounds so different. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let me know when you want to do perfect. Okay. And we'll just go from there.
I will. All right, thank you. Team winning or losing? They're up 2 0. Okay, that's good. And the other team has a red card, so the other team only has 10 men. So this is really good. They should be able to hold this out. Awesome. All right, we have a good rest of the day. I gotta start getting here earlier on Sundays. Well, yeah, we gotta be kind of back to the old pattern and such. No, because it's always, I, you know, I, I, I'm like, why am well, I trying to figure out? Why am I, why is Saturday always better than my Sunday? And the only explanation I come up with is because I've been up longer. So I was to come up with. Uh, there's a reason why I'm here by 7 o'clock at the latest. Not to my need, but just to get walking and get yeah, my money out. I gotta start with it. But yeah, you're right. It's like, it's so used to not having anything. You know, it's a whole different vibe. Newcastle. Newcastle is playing and I didn't leave early to watch it.